Do you still leave your final project on a breadboard like this? Or you hold it all together with a hot glue like I've done with this motion triggered bathroom light? Why not have everything nicely soldered on a PCB like a professional? In today's video, we will look at how to convert this schematic diagram into a professional grade PCB like this one using Easy EDA. Come along. To use Easy EDA, you first need to visit the Easy EDA website. So you go to easyeda.com and here on the website you can go to the Easy EDA designer and then you can use their browser tool to create the PCB you want. But you can also download the desktop client and then use that one. So we would go ahead and download the desktop client. So this is the home page where we were earlier. So download select whichever platform you are using and then download the software for that platform and as you can see the download has started one thing you should know about the desktop client and the browser version is that they both require internet to work if you don't have internet you will still be able to use it but you will not be able to save your work so now when it's done downloading let's go ahead and install it So we'll go ahead and allow this. In order to prevent loss of project files, we'll just go ahead and maintain this very one. So we'll apply and then go ahead and apply this also. So now you can see the very same interface we saw earlier in the browser. And we have to log in so that everything we do is stored in our cloud. So we'll go to login up here and then we can select um, how we want to log in. So you can either sign up and use an email and password or you could just log in with a, a Google account. So I will just go ahead and use a Google account. So when you are done logging in, you notice your profile up here in the top right corner and then over here is where you have your project files or the documents you are working with. Up here you have a few icons for your settings, for creating new or opening existing projects. The EE library here is where you find the parts that you require to create the schematic diagram that you are trying to work on. And then from time to time, you will not find some parts that you require for your diagram, like your MOSFETs or your ICs. So you will have to go here and then search for those ICs by name or by part number. And then if your search is correct, they are going to show up in this space here and then you can grab them and drop them on your schematic sheet. Now, for the purpose of this video, we'll be converting this schematic diagram into the PCB that we want. And this is a circuit that allows you to dim a light bulb. It's a 230 volts, 50 hertz, two wire circuit. Now, also for the purpose of this video, we would not be looking at all the tools or all the capabilities of this software. We would just look at how to convert this into a PCB. So let's begin by creating a new project. So we go to project here and then we go up here and then we select new project and then we name our project. So we'll name it light underscore dimmer. So light dimmer. You go ahead and save and then it presents us with a sheet. So this is sheet number one as you can see here. This asterisk here indicates that this file has not been saved yet so we press ctrl s and you can see this window pop up and it's successfully saved so this is saved to the cloud now if i press it again you can see this thing loading connecting to server and then once that is done it shows up that it's successfully saved and then you can see this asterisk is now missing so to access this sheet one you have to go inside here and then you can see it here sheet one under the light demo project now this is what we are going to do in order to create the circuit we have to add each of these parts one after the other so we are going to start by adding the ic and then followed by these transistors here as a matter of fact i i'm going to make a, a few tweaks to this circuit because i don't want to use these transistors i want to use 
specific ones of my own so i'll make those changes along the line so i'm not going to go through the placement of one each component in this video else the video might be long so i'm going to place one and then fast forward the rest just to show you how to do the very first one okay so let's go ahead so first we'll go to libraries and then we'll look for the fl5150 IC. So we search for it and after a while this shows up so we can see the IC here and then we can see what its footprint will look like on the PCB. And so we can just go ahead and click place and then place it by clicking. And then after you are done clicking it imagines the software imagines that you want to place multiple versions of, of this particular IC. So it, it still holds it on on your mouse but you, you don't need it so you just press escape and then you place this very well okay so the next thing we need from this schematic is the transistors so we are trying to place the most important components first okay so let's go ahead and add the rest of the components we require from this circuit diagram here To zoom in to take a closer look at a part, we use the mouse scroll wheel. So we scroll forward to zoom in or we scroll out like this. If you want to move the entire project left or right, you hold the control key and then you scroll to the left or you scroll to the right. Or you could do the same thing for up and down with the control key still down. Now to rotate a particular part, you just select that part and then you press the space key which will rotate the part. We will go ahead and leave this one as it is because here in the schematic, it was left like this to enable it to be wired easily. So we'll leave it like that. Now notice this transistor here also need to be placed in a way that makes it easy to connect their emitters together. So now we'll go ahead and do the same for this. So we need this pin to come up here, but we need the base to still remain this way for easy connection. So we'll click it and then we'll come up here and then select flip vertical. So we'll click it once and you can see it's been flipped around and now we'll be able to connect this pin to that pin easily while this also remains where it's supposed to be. So let's begin to wire everything together. Now let's start the wiring from this particular transistor. Let's take a look at the circuit diagram. So we realize that the emitter of this transistor goes to VS and then the base goes to the low power pin and then there's a resistor here and it's another resistor here so now let's look at how to wire that so we'd we'll grab a resistor and place it here and then we'll grab another resistor and place it here so now that that is done we'll go up here and select this wire 2 here and then we'll come here and then click on the very edge or the very end of this pin and then you can see there's this green line that follows the mouse around so that is the wire so we go ahead and we connect here like this and then we'll do the very same thing for from here to here like this now this goes through this resistor so we need to connect that also like that so this is how to do wiring so you just basically have to click one point and then go to the other point and click again and click another point and go to another point and click again when you're done wiring you just merely need to press the escape key to stop the wiring too and that is that so let's go ahead and wire up everything just like we can see here in the schematic. While this is ongoing, kindly give us a thumbs up if you've learned something so far and subscribe to this channel to stay in touch on how to design and build more cool stuff. Now we are done with the wiring, but one thing that we've not done is connecting all the grounds together. And so from the schematic, we notice that the, this capacitor has to be connected to ground together with this one, that one, and then this part of the two transistors has to also be connected to ground. So we'll go ahead and add a ground net for that. So we can either use the ground net here or we can use this one, which works the same. So let's just grab one ground net like that and then drop one here, another here, another here, and then here and there. So after that, we'll now go ahead and make the connections to them. So we connect this to that. And as you can see, all of the grounds are now connected nicely. And that is that. So the next thing that we have to do is we have to make sure that we, we name everything 
appropriately as it should be so from the diagram here you realize that um, this particular resistor has a name but in our case we would be using the values as the naming so c1 here has a value so c1 is 100 nanofarad this here would be named 100 nanofarad instead of the 0.1 microfarad you have here so let's go ahead and rename all this component to match their values so this is how you rename them you select the text that comes with the part so you select the text like this just the text not this but just this and then you go up here to the attributes and then you go to the text section and then you change this to 100 nanofarad so you can see it changes to 100 nanofarad so we'd we'll go ahead and change all the names here to the appropriate values The last thing we want to do before we convert to PCB is we want to make sure the package type of all these components here match the package type that we are going to buy. Right now, for, for instance, for this resistor here, for this package type, it's a true hole type. So what I mean by that is the this resistor will have legs that would go through holes on the PCB and be soldered on the other side of the PCB. But that's not what we want. We want the surface mount type. So we would click on it. For you to be highlighted like this and then we'll go to this package section and then click in the space which will bring up this window and then we'll search for the package type we want so that will be 1206 and so when we are done we'll search for 1206 and that will bring up a list of components so then we'll select resistor 1206 which will show us what pcb footprint will look like so it will look like this so we'll click update and then you can see it's updated and then when we select this again you can see here now that it's R1206 so now we'll go ahead and update all the rest of the resistors so let's use the same package type for the capacitors so let's go ahead and change them for 1206 also so we'll select this first one here and then we'll go here and then this time around we are looking for C1206. So we'll go ahead and update those ones too. To convert this to PCB, we go up here and then click convert to PCB. So over here there is two options. You see that you just convert to PCB and start working or you check for errors with your connection. And by that you have to click yes check next so when you click check next it will perform some analysis and then you can as you can see here in this space you can see that there is no red checks on anything here so that means everything here is fine but you can see two yellow marks here so this is switch one pin four and switch one pin five so that is this pin and this pin here so let's just zoom in so this pin and this pin here are pin 4 and pin 5 and these are the legs of the switch the legs that go through the pcb board and it's saying that they are not connected to anything yes we do not mean to connect them to anything so we'll just leave it as it is so because it's yellow here means that if we do not connect these um it doesn't really pose a problem to this pcb and that's why it's yellow if we if it were red it means that there is something wrong here and that we have to fix it before we move forward but since it's yellow and it's intended anyway we'll just go ahead and leave it as it is so we'll go back here and click convert to pcb once again and then this time around we'll select no because we've already checked the connections so after a while of loading you would see that it puts everything of ours here in this black space with everything mixed up here like this so the blue wires you see crossing each other is referred to as a rat's nest so we will have to pack all these and then put them here in this um, box here we see and this box will form the borders of your pcb it will also form the shape and the size of your pcb so first we'll have to move each and every one of these components into this box to arrange them as we want it to be on the pcb because this will be the final pcb and as usual to drag and drop something you just need to hold it and then move it if we have components that are going to heat up like this um, mosfets here they are likely to heat up based on which load you connect to them you might want to make sure that 
these MOSFETs are at the part of the PCB where they, they don't affect the working of something else. Like this transistor doesn't have a heat sink. So that means that this is not um, going to tolerate a lot of heat. So you make sure that you don't put this transistor in the same space where this MOSFETs are. So you might want to put the MOSFETs a little bit on the other side of the board and then the other components on the other side of the board. So let's go ahead and arrange or move all these into the space here and then let's start wiring. Let's go ahead and look at some of the tools and the stuff that are available for us to use to finish our PCB. So this part is the layers and objects section and what this basically is, it allows you to toggle between layers. So if you pick up any PCB, the part you are looking at on the surface is the top layer. When you flip the PCB around, the other part is the bottom layer. So you can see by default the pencil here is on the top layer. So the top silk layer is the the writings so this markings that you see in yellow so the the markings that you see that demarcates the space or shape of the parts you are going to place and the name these things form the top silk layer so as you can see in yellow here anything you see in yellow on this board is part of the top silk layer if you want to go to the other side of the pcb you just have to click this and then move the pencil to bottom layer so you can see that everything becomes a little bit dim because we are on the other side of the PCB and anything you are doing here is happening at the back of the PCB so we bring it back here so you can see everything is bright again and in focus so we are on the top so let's go ahead and um, wire this up so you notice that in this section when we're creating the schematics we called these green lines wires because they are the wires that we are using to link things together but over here in the PCB section, these things are not called wires. These blue lines are not called wires. They are called tracks. And by connecting them together or connecting them to where they are supposed to go, it's called routing. And one thing we have to pay attention to or take note of is that everything that has to do with power on this circuit would, would have to have a thick track. What do I mean by this? Let's take a look at this circuit. So you realize that the power comes in from the AC main supply through this line. In our case, it is coming in through this two pin header here. So it comes in through here, goes through the fuse and then from the fuse, it gets spread across um, the places it should go, right? So this MOSFET is going to be doing all the hard work or there's going to be a lot of power passing through this MOSFET. So you have to make sure that the wires that lead to and out of this MOSFET are thick enough to handle the calculated amount of power that would come through. So for that, we will need to make any wire between here, the input and the MOSFET to the diodes thick so that there is no power losses along those tracks. I'm going to just do a few um, once you catch on I'll go ahead and fast forward to so we would click here and then go from here to here and so you notice that the thickness of this wire is, is very thin this is um, 0 0.5 millimeters as you can see here 0 0.5 millimeters so if we want to increase the weight we'll just have to click on the track or the route and then we'll come here to weight and then we'll change that to so let's choose 2.5 and see how that goes so this is 2.5 millimeters and it's, it seems okay so let's go ahead and wire up the other ones so we'll click here and we'll click here Let's go ahead to the smaller components. And here you notice something. This transistor here has a connection that goes all the way around the PCB to this end. So you can see it's, it's why it's very far. So you have to um, bring this component closer so that the wiring is not so long. And that would also prevent any energy losses along the line. So let's go ahead and leave this here and then restructure the rest. So we move these guys down and then you notice that this component is also supposed to be somewhere here to 
reduce the power losses as I was mentioning earlier. So we'll go ahead and move that also forward. While this is ongoing, kindly give us a thumbs up if you've learned something so far and subscribe to this channel to stay in touch on how to design and build more cool stuff. Yes, so I guess this is much better. So we'll do the same for any other component that might potentially cause problems for us later on. So we'll move them closer. We'll do the same for this, move this away. Also note that we are not going to be routing the ground. So any pin that is supposed to go to ground like this one, uh, that is supposed to go here, which is also ground, we are not going to be routing any of the grounds. We would use what is called the copper area. So we would put like a, a huge copper area here to connect all grounds together automatically. We will see how to do that later on along the line. So we'll just, we'll just leave this as it is and then go ahead and route all the other pins, just leaving grounds. Okay, so let's go ahead. Um, you realize that these pins are not as big or these pads here are not as big or thick as this one. So if we use um, thicker routes like this 2.5 millimeter one, it's going to just leak into the other pad. So we we'll just have to drop the width. So we'll go here and drop it to say 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 should be okay. And then let's go ahead and wire this first one. And as you can see, yes, um, this this looks okay. So we can go ahead and wire all the other ones that are left. Also notice that none of the connections here are crossing at 90 degrees or are moving at 90 degrees because we've selected 45 degree routing angle here and the reason for that 45 is that when parts cross at 90 degrees this could lead to um, electromagnetic interference or this could also introduce humming or some form of noise into the circuit so you don't want this routes um, going around this board at 90 degrees so you can see this goes at 45 45 45 45 and this is how you should route so let's go ahead and route the other components. So now we are done connecting all the small parts, but we run into some problems. And that is, we want to connect this part to this part, but notice that there is no space or part that we can use for the routing. So what we do is we use something called a via. So this is here. So what you do is you grab a via, and you place a via here and then you place another one here so what is going to happen is we'll connect this part to this via and then on the other side of this PCB we'll connect this via to that via and then on this surface we'll connect this back to that so what we've done is we pass the connection through this hole to the other surface of the PCB and all the way to this and then through the hole back to this surface and then back here and this is the way by which a lot of um, manufacturers or people out there who make very complex PCBs um, connect components together when there is um, no part available for them to use so let's see how to use it we are going to name this via first the vias must must match the names of the nets that or the sorry the names of the parts that they need to be connected to so if you take a look at this part you notice it's called q2 q2-2 so we would copy that same q2-2 name for the net here and then click the via and then name it also q2-2 if you don't name it like that it's not going to allow you to connect to it so as you can see as i change the name to q2-2 the blue line extends into the via and then we'll do the same thing here we'll name this also q2-2 and then you, you notice that it does that so now this is what we can do we can connect this to this part here and then connect it here and then we can connect this to this but then notice that the middle part has not been connected yet so this is what we do um, we would go to the other surface which is the bottom layer and then on the bottom layer we'll connect this to that and then we'll come back here 
so you can see that this goes through this through the other surface and then back here to where it's supposed to go so this is how to use a VR now notice that there are a couple of connections that also require the same technique like this needs to go here and this needs to go here but there is no space so what we do is we'll have to use VRs to get it there We notice that the ground lines are the only connections that are left but i also noticed that we made we omitted one thing so over here we are supposed to connect the chips main ground line to a ground net also so that all these guys can be connected together so let's just go ahead and add um a ground a, a ground net here and then connect that to this yeah like that so when we are done we have to update our pcb with this new connection yes yeah, so we have to apply changes so you can see that when i highlight this it indicates that there should be a connection from here all the way to here and there and all the other grounds but because of the net we are going to be using here and in order to prevent the 230 volts from having any form of electromagnetic um, interference or any leakage to our ground we would want to extend this ground here manually by ourselves before we put the net here so let's go ahead and use a via once again so i'll put the via here but then we will make this via bigger because we need it to match the thickness of this in a way so let's just select it and then we'll go to the properties here and we would state the diameter to be 2.5 so it's now bigger and then we'll state the hole to be um let's say one so this this looks a lot better but we can we can also use 1.5 and so this this looks like a better via so we we'll would go ahead and copy this and duplicate it here and then put another one here some of the writings are at places that are not so cool so we'll have to change them so q1 for instance is upside down so let's let's turn it upright so you just click on it and then you press the space key and then that will just turn it around okay so I think everything is in order now so now we can go ahead and add the ground net so this is how we do it you click on the net ground net and then you draw the ground net so you first have to left click once and then we will left click right around here and then we'll left click down here once again and then when you want to end it you will right click instead so right click and you can see that it, it adds that red ground mesh everywhere on the on the top layer and then we can go ahead and do that for the bottom layer also this mesh we've put here or the ground copper covering we put here would also aid later on in the cooling of um, some of these components if they get warmer somehow and now we are done with our pcb so let's go ahead and check what it should look like when this is manufactured so before we do that we could just turn the top layer off and take a look at what the lower layer looks like and make sure everything is in order and then we'll turn the lower off and then check what the upper one also looks like and everything is also in order here so we'll go ahead and go up here and select 3d view and then it generates the 3d view with the components as you can see so we'll go ahead and rotate that and take a look so these components are showing and some aren't showing because 
the ones that are showing are parts that I picked directly from the LCSC store. So those parts um, have the aspects and everything up there in the cloud. So it brings that here. But the ones that I chose from user contributed files are, are not showing as you can see. But when we buy them, they will actually fit as, as they should be. Okay, so let's go ahead and rotate this. You can see the transistor here and then you can see the switch and the and the MOSFETs um, space also. So we'll turn it around. You can see the leg of the transistor and the legs of the switch. You can also see the vias with the small holes over here. And then we can flip it back. So this is what you will have when your circuit is manufactured for you. If you, are, if you are not a fan of blue and you are a fan of green, you can just go here and change the blue to green and then you have your classic regular PCB color. You can also change to to black, white or whichever one works for you. So we can also see what the black will look like and it's all nice. Okay, so about how to save this file. So you just go ahead up here while you are in the PCB side of things, you just go up here and then you go to generate PCB fabrication file, which is also known as Geba. So we just click this and then it asks us to check the connections. So we just say yes. And then when it checks the connections and it sees no error, we come here. But if it finds an error as before, it will show us a list here with the error names and stuff. Okay, so this is the PCB and this is what it will look like. And we can order this PCB for $5. So $5 is the cost of um, producing this PCB for you. But shipping would also come as a separate entity on its own. Alright, so we can just generate the Geba file and back it up to our cloud or whichever space we want to back it up to. Or, or we could just click this and go ahead and order it. But for the length of this video, I will just end it here. I'm going to make another video that will show you how to order the parts over here and also order the manufacturing of this particular board. Go ahead and generate the Geba file. And then as you can see, it comes with a nice long name with the dates and everything. So we'll just go ahead and save it. If you learned something here today, kindly give us a thumbs up to show your support for this channel. If you are new here, subscribe to stay in touch on how to design and build more cool stuff. Thanks for watching and see you next time.